Greetings, everyone, and welcome to our time of worship for this coming Sunday, August the 11th, 2024. Also, it goes by various names such as lectionary number 19, proper number 14th, or the 12th Sunday after Pentecost. But let's stick with August 11th, okay? Let's begin our time together with a word of prayer. Gracious God, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Give us this bread always, that he may live in us and we in him, and that strengthened by this food, we may live as his body in the world, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first lesson is recorded in the 19th chapter of First Kings. When Elijah saw how things were, he ran for dear life to Beersheba, far in the south of Judah. He left his young servant there and, and then went on into the desert, another day's journey. He came to a lone broom bush and collapsed in its shade, wanting in the worst way to be done with it all, to just die. Enough of this, God. Take my life. I'm ready to join my ancestors in the grave. Exhausted, he fell asleep under the lone broom bush. Suddenly, an angel shook him awake and said, Get up and eat. He looked around and to his surprise, right by his head were a loaf of bread baked on some coals and a jug of water. He ate the meal and went back to sleep. The angel of God came back shook him awake again and said, Get up and eat some more. You've got a long journey ahead of you. He got up, ate and drank his fill and set out. Nourished by that meal, he walked 40 days and nights all the way to the mountain of God to Horeb. When he got there, he crawled into a cave and went to sleep. Then the word of God came to him. So Elijah... What are you doing here? This ends the first lesson. Our psalm that we'll be singing in church, in our church anyhow at Zion, uh, is based on the first eight verses of Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. The praise of God shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the lowly hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord who answered me and delivered me from all my terrors. Look upon the Lord and be radiant and let your faces be ashamed. Let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear the Lord and delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in God. Our second lesson is from the fourth and also the fifth chapters of the book of Ephesians. What this adds up to then is this. No more lies. No more pretenses. Tell your neighbor the truth. In Christ's body, we're all connected to each other after all. When you lie to others, you end up lying to yourself. Go ahead and be angry. You do well to be angry, but don't use your anger as fuel for revenge. And don't stay angry. Don't go to bed angry. Don't give the devil that kind of foothold in your life. Do you use to make, did you used to make ends um, meet by stealing? Well, no more. Get an honest job so you can help others who can't work. And watch the way that you talk. Let nothing foul or dirty come out of your mouth. Say only what helps, each word a gift. Don't grieve God. Don't break his heart. His Holy Spirit moving and breathing in you is the most intimate part of your life, making you fit for himself. Don't say take such a gift for granted. Make a clean break with all cutting backbiting, profane talk. Be gentle with one another, sensitive. Forgive one another as quickly and thoroughly as God in Christ forgave you. Watch what God does and then do it. 
like children who learn proper behavior from their parents. Mostly what God does is love you. Keep company with him and learn a life of love. Observe how Christ loved us. His love was not cautious, but extravagant. He didn't love in order to get something from us, but to give everything of himself to us. Love like that. And then our gospel reading is from John, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. The person who aligns with me no, no more, hungers no more and thirsts no more, ever. I have told you this explicitly because even though you have seen me in action and don't really believe me, every person the Father gives me is eventually comes running to me. And once that person is with me, I hold on and don't let go. I came down from heaven not to follow my own whim, but to accomplish the will of the one who sent me. Now at this, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven, the Jews started arguing over him. Isn't this the son of Joseph? You know, don't we know his father? Don't we know his mother? How can he now say, I came down out of heaven and expect anyone to believe him? Jesus said, don't bicker among yourselves over me. You're not in charge here. The Father who sent me is in charge. He draws people to me. And that's the only way you'll ever come. Only then do I do my work, putting people together, setting them on their feet, ready uh, for, the, for the end. This is what the prophets meant when they wrote, and then they will all be personally taught by God. Anyone who has spent any time at all listening to the Father, really listening and, and therefore learning, comes to me to be taught personally, to see it with his own eyes, to hear it with his own ears, from me, since I have it firsthand from the Father. No one has seen the Father except the one who has his being alongside the Father, and you can see me. I'm telling you the most solemn and sober truth now. Whoever believes in me has real life, eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna bread in the desert, and they died. But now here is bread that truly comes down out of heaven. Anyone eating this bread will not die ever. I am the bread, living bread, who came down out of heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live and forever. The bread that I present to the world so that it can eat and drink is myself, this flesh and blood self, the gospel of our Lord. Okay, folks. Wow. There's a lot of stuff going on in these lessons today. Um, that lesson from First Kings with Elijah. Elijah has just been prophesying against the king and queen of Israel up north, that would be Ahab and Jezebel. Oh, evil Jezebel, right? And uh, in one of the things he did, he had a confrontation with all the prophets of Baal and Asherah. Uh, and in this time of confrontation, it, just to make a long story short, Elijah won, all right? And... As part of winning, he killed all those prophets, all the evil prophets up there. Well, that didn't sit too well with Jezebel. And Jezebel decided, I'm going after Elijah. When I find him, he's as good as dead. So Elijah takes off. Now, Elijah's been prophesying against all the, the bad stuff that's been going on up north, had this episode in which he comes out on top, victorious. So you think, okay, he's made some headway and things are going to go well for him. Nah, it didn't happen. So he takes off and he runs. And as the story goes, he just wants to die. So he curls up in a ball underneath a tree out in the wilderness. I mean, he had really run far, far away from Jezebel, so he's not going to be caught by her and, and anybody that she has pursuing him, but he just wants to die. He's tired. He's worn out. He's exhausted. 
And we have this story of an angel coming along and said, hey, hey, bud, come on, wake up, wake up, wake up. Here, eat. And miraculously, there's some fresh bread right there. Uh, who, who can deny themselves fresh bread? You know, fresh out of the oven, good stuff. And not only that, there's some water there. So he eats it and he drinks it. And you think, okay, now he's going to get back on his feet and... Eh, you know what he does? Goes back to sleep. So the angel shakes him up and says, Look, come on, eat, eat, eat some more. You've got a long journey ahead. And he ate so much that he was able to journey the rest of the way to the Mount Horeb 40 days and 40 nights without stopping. Whoa. Yeah, okay. Well, once he gets there, what does he do? He goes and crawls in a cave and goes to sleep. And this time the, uh, the word of God comes to him and says, Elijah, Elijah, what are you doing, bud? See, God wanted Elijah down there because he still had work for him to do. And he needed to, to you know, have a little time together with Elijah to get ready to send him back north to continue his work because he wanted him to go and anoint the next king of Israel. All right. it's, it's an interesting passage. And you, when you look at it, you think, that could be me. I could be totally exhausted and tired from doing all God's work. And all people want to do is just kill me. You know, so I'm going to run. Well, what happens in, the, in those times of trouble when we are exhausted and, and just want to give up everything god is there to provide bread and water you know symbols at that time of of life just keep in mind jesus saying i am the bread of life all right now let's move on to the psalm psalm 34 this is one of those really cool so songs excuse me we only get eight verses here but it goes to 22 verses because it's one of those acrostics, one of those psalms that each verse begins with a corresponding letter of the alphabet in order, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way to the end. And in the Hebrew alphabet, there's 22 letters. So we have the first eight verses. And also what's interesting about it is a superscription that goes with it that says, this is when David pretended he was a crazy man in the uh, court of uh, Abimelech. What? What's all that about? Now you have to go to 1 Samuel to read about that. And it's at a time when David was on the run from Saul. Saul wanted to kill David because he was intensely jealous of him because he knows David's going to be the next king. And he just thinks David's getting in his way right now. So he sent out people to, to take care of him in a bad way. So... Um, this is a psalm of praise. It's classified as an individual thanks, hymn of thanksgiving in which God's delivered me. I bless the Lord at all times. You know, the praise of God will ever be in my mouth. And why? I'll glory in the Lord and pro proclaim his, his goodness because I sought the Lord and he answered me and he delivered me from all of my fears. And in, in this translation, it says all my terrors. So he's calling upon people to be radiant and, and let let their faces be radiant. You know, look up. God is here to deliver us. Really, really cool psalm. Now, what's neat is how it ends. It says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in God. Taste and see. Taste. Experience it. Put it in your mouth. Eat it. Like that bread that saves Elijah, right? Like the bread of life. Okay. All right, we're at our second lesson, Ephesians. Remember, the second lessons during the season of Pentecost don't necessarily line up with what we're talking about in here. Uh, not so much either. However, this is really good stuff. So you, you need to read it. Ephesians 4, it's uh, verses 25 through the first two verses of chapter 5. This is where we've been talking about it for a couple of weeks now, where the rubber hits the road. When, and when Paul was writing to the uh, church at Ephesus, he's saying, now, you know, you are in Christ. You're all one in Christ. 
Now this is how you're supposed to act. Because when you're one in Christ, when you put your faith and hope and trust in Christ and what he's done for you, and he certainly has done a lot for you, what's going to happen is you're going to act in a way that shows you know that. And, and so there's a lot of ethical stuff going on in this passage, but it all boils down to one thing. You got to love each other, love one another. And there's just not enough of that going on in that church in Ephesus. But come to think of it, do all of our churches maybe fall a little short there too? Yeah, maybe. Maybe we all need to learn to love each other and to tolerate one another and accept one another in a, in a much more powerful way. Because when the world sees that, they will see Christ at work in our lives and in this world. Okay. Having said all that now, we move on to the passage from uh, the sixth chapter of John. And we start with verse 35 that kind of repeats what we just about ended up with last week. Jesus saying, I am the bread of life. Okay. I am the bread of life. Uh, but then uh, he had a little bit of a back and forth dialogue with the people last week. This week, it's more Jesus says this and the people, they kind of respond in a negative way. And then Jesus kind of launches into a little mini speech on just what he means when he says, I am the bread of life. Now, what's important to know is that as Jesus is talking and saying, I'm the bread that came down from heaven, uh, okay, he goes on to talk about this bread that continues to rain down upon the people that comes from heaven. And that bread is me. It's, it's me giving my life, my life for the sake of this world, for the sake of all of you. And here's the deal. That bread that Moses was able to provide the people in the wilderness, that came down out of heaven, yeah. Well, the people back then ate that bread, and they were still going to die, and they did. But not you. Whoever lives, whoever eats of this bread that comes down from heaven and is coming down, God's continually doing. He's not giving up on you. Even if you turn your back on him, he's still sending that bread. It's coming down. And if you eat of this bread, you will live forever. Yeah. But that eternal life, it starts right now. It's what you're experiencing right now. But then as you move on and live out that eternal life, yes, and then one day you will die. But you will uh, be, be so drawn to Christ that you will experience the resurrected life. Yeah, in, in the end, resurrected life is waiting for you and for me. Right now, eternal life is ours to grasp and to hold and to live out in this world. So it's a beautiful, beautiful passage that brings together all this talk of bread of life that we've been talking about the last couple of weeks. Well, let's take time to join together now in a prayer of intercession. Calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Reignite the prayer of the church by your spirit. Root your church around the globe in prayer and spiritual practices. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We rely on the goodness of your creation in everything we do. We pray for trees that offer shade and for our fellow creatures that depend on the trees for shelter and food. Sustain the work of all who advocate for forest and wilderness areas. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Guide our leaders and nations with a spirit of justice and mercy. Let no evil come out of our mouths, but rather let us extend grace. We pray also for our enemies. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Sustain feeding ministries and organizations such as the ELCA World Hunger and our local food pantries. We work and pray for a day when hunger is no more. Merciful God, receive our prayer. 
We pray for this congregation and for all who are gathered. Be present among anyone who cannot be with us today. Be with all who are hurting, grieving, or ill. Merciful Father, receive our prayer. We remember the saints who have gone before us in faith, trusting in the promise of the resurrection. We find hope in your communion of saints of all times and all places. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. And we pray them all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Now go out and enjoy this wonderful day. In the name of Christ, our Lord. Amen.